Hello, I'm Cresta Cow and I'm the author and the illustrator of the How to Train Your Dragon books and the Wizard One series. I'm also the current Children's Laureate. Welcome to Cressida's Creativity Camp, Creativity Summer Camp. All week we're going to be doing videos about uh, magical ideas and about poetry and about creating drawings. Um, because I know you've all been very busy since March. You've been working at home, being homeschooled. Um, but this is all about creating for the joy of it. This is what the summer camp is all about. Um, so we've got different days on which we're going to be talking about different um, I, uh, aspects of magical ideas. So I know you guys have loads of magical ideas. I want to get you creating all summer. So doing your own drawings, making up your own poems, making up your own comic strips, um, writing and reading and drawing and creating for the joy of it. We're going to help you create your own imaginary world. Anyway, um, I've got an amazing lineup today. Today is Poetry Day and I'm very excited because I'm going to get to to read poems um, by Michael Rosen, who's a bit of a hero of mine, um, who was also a laureate. Um, but I've got some incredible poets giving poetry work workshops. We've got um, the Children's Laureate for London. Yeah, no, it's the Young People Person's Laureate for London, sorry, Teresa Lola. Teresa Lola, she's giving a poetry workshop. And then we've got, oh, we've got Laura Dockrell, we've got Joseph Cola. Um, uh, we've got, oh, let's see, yes, we've got, some, we've got, yes, we've got Joshua Segal. We've got all these people are so lucky we are, who are giving readings and tips about um, creating poetry. I love poems and poetry, and I think it's, I think it's because poems are particularly good at um, creating a mood. I mean, they're fun to, to write as well because they're quite short. <laughs> yeah, they're quite short to write and quite short to read. But they're particularly good. They're like songs, I suppose. Or um, they're, very, they're very good at creating a mood. Um, somebody, somebody wrote, um, some, some, yeah, a great writer called Samuel Taylor Coleridge said that poetry is the best words in the best order. I love that. Um, but I think it's the mood that I love um, so much about poetry. So even though I, um, I, I'm writing fiction books, um, I, I, I put a lot of poems and songs in the books. This is, this is one of the books that I wrote um, and illustrated. It's called um, Wizards of Once. And it's about a world in which magic really exists. I just... I, I end it with a song, with a poem, and I'll just show you how, um, how, how, how this creates the mood of the world that I'm, I'm talking about. Once there was magic, wandering free in roads of sky and paths of sea, and in that timeless long gone hour, words of nonsense still had power. Doors still flew and birds still talked, witches grinned and giants walked. We had magic wands and magic wings, and we lost our hearts to impossible things. Unbelievable thoughts, unsensible ends, for wizards and warriors could be friends in a world where impossible things are true. I don't know why we forgot the spell, when we lost the way, how the forest fell. But now we are old, we can vanish too. And I see once more the invisible track that will lead us home and take us back. So find your wands and... and... Uh, spread your wings, I'll sing our love of impossible things. And when you take my vanished hand, we'll both go back to that magic land where we lost our hearts several lifetimes ago when we were wizards once. And you see how the poem takes you back. And I actually wrote that poem before I'd even started writing the book because it, it took me into the mood of that world, a world where magic really might be true. And the, and the kids in the story really are magic um and in i do the same in how to train your dragon in the how to train your dragon books there's a lot of poems and and songs that through throughout um the books um and a lot of them yeah so the hero cares cares not for a wild winter storm for it carries him swift on the back of the wave all may be lost and our hearts may be worn but a hero fights forever so that kind of 
that kind of poem is a bit more you know the wizard's well it's very much taking you to a magical land and is quite mysterious but that kind of poem is much more yes it's about the fighting you know um uh, up up with your sword and strike at the gale ride the rough seas for those waves are your home winters may freeze but our hearts do not fail hero heroic hearts forever you are never alone if the sea of your friend riding the waves of impossible quest if it doesn't end well then it isn't the end a hero fights forever so you see that's very rousing um and and for the end of the book that that was the last book i end on that sort of rousing you need to fight you know you need to fight for what is right um or another poem that i love i love being able to give the opportunity to read these poems <laughs> I, I have never cared this is called not the settling kind I've never cared for castles or a crown that grips too tight. Let the night sky be my starry roof and the moon my only light. My heart was born a hero, my storm-bound sword won't rest. I left the harbour long ago on a never-ending quest. I'm off to the horizon where the wild wind blows the foam. Come, let lo get lost with me, love, and the sea shall be our home. And that's more of a sort of thoughtful kind of um, poem and these are all just in I put them in my books because I love I love poems and I love songs now oh, this is my favorite bit I'm going to get to read um, the poems as I said a bit of a hero of mine um, Michael Rosen um, who was also a laureate a long time ago and he's done so much for children's books and for reading and and getting kids excited and about and reading and and creating for the joy of it Michael has done so much um uh with that and and so it's lovely to have the opportunity to read his poems these ones I'm going to read a different ones I mean so I've read you some poems in my own books which are um creating a mood of um reflection or um or of fighting a hero fighting forever or a magical world these are a different kind of poem which i used to love as a kid um which is funny poems um and i'm going to take a few i had so such difficulty choosing which ones to read uh, but i'm going to read you um mustard the mustard and custard one the don't from this is from mustard custards custard grumble belly and gravy and this is particularly good as well because you get Quentin Blake's illustrations and I love his illustrations. So I'm going to try and show you two the, the illustrations before I read the poem. This is his poem called Don't. Don't do, don't do, don't do that. You can hear this is this is the parent talking to the child. A lot of these poems that I'm going to read you of Michael Rosen's are about family life. Um, and so we'll all recognise what's going on here. Don't do, don't do, don't do that. Don't pull faces, don't tease the cat. Don't pick your ears, don't be rude at school. Who do they think I am? Some kind of fool? This is the kid speaking about the parent who's saying don't. One day they'll say, don't put toffee in my coffee. Don't put gravy on the baby. Don't put beer in his ear. Don't stick your toes up his nose. Don't put confetti on the spaghetti. And don't squash peas on your knees. Don't put ants in your pants. Don't put mustard in the custard. Don't chuck jelly at the telly. And don't throw fruit at a computer. Don't throw fruit at a computer. Don't what? Don't throw fruit at a computer. Don't what? Don't throw fruit at a computer. What do they think I am? Some kind of fool? Yeah, I love that one. Um, hang on, and then Grumble Belly. Where's the Grumble Belly one? I love the Grumble Belly one. Oh, so I've lost my place. Where is Grumble Belly? Uh, I'll have to come back to that one. I lost my place. Where's Grumble Belly? 
Oh, well, I'll come back to that one. I'm going to read you. In the meantime, um, what if this is from another one? Um, called Bananas in My Ears, a collection of poems by Michael Rosen, illustrated by the wonderful Quentin Blake. What if, what if they made children-sized diggers and you could take them down to the beach to dig really big holes and great big sand castles and the waves that the waves couldn't knock down? What if they made children-sized submarines you could get into and go off underwater looking at people's feet and you could find old wrecked ships and glide about finding treasure. What if they made children-sized helicopters? This is all about the imagination of children here, thinking about what if that you took with you to the beach. I love this idea. So that you could take off in one of them whenever you wanted to and fly about above the beach or up the cliffs, looking into those high up caves and swoop down again towards the sea and some secret beach. What if they made children sized ice creams? I love this because this is using your imagination that children are particularly good at those magic ideas. What if? Children ask what if all the time. And this one. What if, what if my bed grew wings and I could fly away in my bed? I would fly to the top of a high block of flats, look out over all the streets and then come floating slowly down to the ground. I love that idea. I used to imagine that when I was a kid. What if my bed could fly? I would fly to a misty island near Japan and watch fishing boats cross the sea. If my bed grew wings, I would fly to a thick forest where there was an old broken down castle that no one knew about hidden in the trees. And wherever I went and whatever this I saw all the time, I was in my bed. Okay, and then I'm going to read these of the hands. This is, those are funny poems I've read. Do get them there. They're very funny, these lovely, um, lovely poems by Michael Rosen. Um, but this is a more serious poem. This is, this is a poem that Michael wrote for this wonderful anthology called um, These Are The Hands, poets uh, from poems from the heart of the NHS. And it's a poetry uh, anthology. All pre proceeds from this book will go to NHS Pack Charity. So it's a great um, thing to, to, to get at the moment, um, I would say, this book, because we're supporting our wonderful NHS who are fighting for us and and Michael wrote this poem this is lovely because he wrote this poem before because he, he he had just has just come out of a hospital where he was he was looked after um, by the NHS and our wonderful NHS and um, it's really rather lovely that he wrote this poem and and was behind um, a real force behind writing this anthology even before he went into hospital and it just shows that sometimes you fight things you're fighting for um you know then you then you get rewarded don't you, <laughs> you know because all the people that he's been fighting for um saved his life um he's now thank goodness out of hospital wonderful michael rosen i was so worried about him um anyway this is his wonderful poem about the nhs and it's called these are the hands these are the hands that touch us first feel your head about all the people who work in the NHS. Fill your head, find the pulse, and make your bed. These are the hands that tap your back, test the skin, hold your arm, wheel the bin. Ah, change the bulb, fix the drip, pour the jug, replace your hip. These are the hands that fill the bath, mop the floor, flip the switch, soothe the saw, burn the swabs, give us a jab, throw out sharps, design the lab. And those are the hands, and these are the hands that stop the leaks, empty the pan, wipe the pipes, carry the can, clamp the veins, make the cast, log the dose, and touch us last. That's a beautiful poem. And that's a more reflective poem, isn't it? It's a poem that gets you thinking about all the people who work for the NHS. Doctors and you know, people cleaning and people designing and um, 
to find in the lab. So it's a lovely reflective poem that sort of sums up um, a feeling about the NHS in, in, in quite a, and that's what a lovely thing about poems, uh, in, a, in a reflective and short but very poignant way, very moving. So thank you, Michael for letting me share some of your wonderful poems and please everyone do um watch the videos um from poets or all, all the poets i've talked about up for today don't forget oh this is this is um the summer camp has two flowers here um he's just reminding you um if you if you want to share anything yourself you have to yeah you access all the websites here on bookfest .org.uk but if you want to share your poems um, uh, and get an adult to share them for you online um, use the hashtag uh, Crest of Summer Camp and then Book Trust on, or I might retweet you so other people get to um, read your poems if you want to have a go at writing your own poems um, and also if you want to do, put your drawings in also share them with that um, hashtag because um, we might we've got a magic ideas gallery do check check out that um, uh, magical ideas gallery on the book trust website because we're also going to have a special section to show children's work as well have fun creating your own poetry ah and here's grumble belly okay you can't catch me grumble belly don't want to you couldn't if you wanted to grumble belly this is the kid talking. Couldn't if you wanted to, Grumble Belly. I wouldn't if I could. You're too slow, Grumble Pump. Oh, am I? You can't catch me, Grumble Pump Pump. I'm very, very slow, but when I'm quick, says Grumble Belly, I'll get you. I'll get you. I've got you. I've got you. And I'll never let you go. I love that. I love the illustrations here as well. I love that the the, the child and and Grumble Belly turning into a monster in that picture. But actually, yeah, he's reading a book with 